This lesson introduces the idea of linear programming, the method for optimising problems in two variables. I'm going to be referring to this example throughout the lesson, so pause the video and read it through to make sure that you can understand what's happening first. So we have two existing potions, X and Y, each contain certain amounts of elements A, B and C. Our new potion needs to contain the elements as stated in these restrictions. We'll start by drawing up a table, trying different amounts of potion X and Y. If we start with 10 millilitres of potion X and 40 millilitres of potion Y, and remember the potion is going to be topped up with a liquid which doesn't contain either of the elements. 10 millilitres of potion X will contain 20 milligrams of element A. The 40 millilitres of potion Y will contain 40 milligrams of element A. Altogether, we have 60 milligrams of element A. And then for element B, 10 millilitres of potion X contains 20 milligrams of element B. 40 millilitres of potion Y contains 120 milligrams of element B. Altogether we have 140 milligrams of element B. And then for element C, 10 millilitres of potion X contain 20 milligrams of element C. 40 millilitres of potion Y contain 280 milligrams of element C. Altogether we have 300 milligrams of element C. Now remember, we need to abide by these restrictions. The first one says that we need at least 80 milligrams of element A, but with this combination, we have only 60 milligrams of element A. So this combination of 10 millilitres of potion X and 40 millilitres of potion Y does not meet the criteria due to insufficient amounts of element A. Next, I'll try 70 millilitres of potion X and 10 millilitres of potion Y. And using the same method, you can see that this mixture contains 150 milligrams of element A, 170 milligrams of element B, and 210 milligrams of element C. This does meet the criteria. So now what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try some different amounts of potion X and potion Y. These are suggestions, but you can try amounts of your choosing and complete the table to see if you can work out a pattern or a range of values for potion X and potion Y that will meet these criteria. Next, I'm going to plot graphically the different values of X and Y. I'm going to use two different colours, one for the combinations which were fine and the other for combinations which did not fit one or more of the criteria. So the first one, 10 millilitres of potion X and 40 millilitres of potion Y, that had insufficient element A. So I'm going to plot the point 1040 in red. Next I tried 70 and 10 and that was fine. So I'll use blue for that one. And then I'm going to plot the other values that I tried. So you should do the same. Plot the pairs of values of X and Y. And remember, you can use your own amounts for X and Y, not just the ones that have been selected here. Here are some of the points that you could have plotted. The blue crosses represent feasible amounts of potion X and potion Y. And the red points represent those combinations which are not feasible. We really need quite a bit more data here to establish exactly which combinations are feasible and which are not. Try to find the limits of the blue, what we call feasible region. Try some values around these blue crosses. For example, 40, 30, 20, 40, 30, 10 and see if you can establish exactly where the bounds of this feasible region lie. Now so far we've been using a bit of a guess and check approach. So for the rest of this lesson I'm going to work through a more systematic method which follows these steps. Firstly, defining the variables. Then we're going to write the restrictions in terms of the variables. 
graph the resulting inequalities to determine the feasible region and then determine which point in the feasible region gives us the optimal solution. So firstly we defined our variables with x being the amount of potion x and y the amount of potion y. Just be careful here, x and y in lowercase are the variables while capital X and capital Y are the names of the potions. Normally the problems that we're looking at have more imaginative names than potion X and potion Y, but there is a difference between the variables X and Y and the names of the potions capital X and capital Y. Secondly, we write each of the restrictions in terms of these variables X and Y. For example, in X millilitres of potion X, there are 2x milligrams of element A. In y millilitres of potion y, there are y milligrams of element A. And we're told that there must be no more than 160 milligrams of element A in the resulting potion. 2x plus y must be less than or equal to 160. Similarly, we're told that at least 80 milligrams of element A must be in the potion. So 2x plus y must be greater than or equal to 80. See if you can write inequalities to represent the final three restrictions on our potion. Element B comes from 2 milligrams for every milliliter of potion X and 3 milligrams for every milliliter of potion Y. We need to have at least 120 milligrams of element B, but no more than 180 milligrams. And element C comes from 2 milligrams for every milliliter of potion X and 7 milligrams for every milliliter of potion Y. And we've got to have at least 140 milligrams of element C. Now there are two more inequalities which are not explicitly stated but we should be able to ascertain from the context. X and Y cannot be negative. So x and y both greater than or equal to zero are implicit in the context of the problem. And you should always look out for these additional inequalities which are not stated anywhere but are obvious from the context. We'll just have a quick review of how to graph inequalities. Firstly to graph the equation x equals 3 that means that every point on the line has an x-coordinate of 3. Now if we want to graph an inequality such as x greater than or equal to 3, this means we're now graphing a region of the graph consisting of all the points where the x-coordinate is greater than or equal to 3. So if we draw that line x equals 3, every point to the right of this line has an x-coordinate which is greater than or equal to 3. And so to indicate that, we shade this side of the line. Now what if we need to graph an inequality where all of the x-values are greater than but not equal to 3? If we were just dealing with integer solutions, then we could move our line to x equals 4 and shade to the right of that. But if we're dealing with any values, just not including 3, so it could be 3.1, 3.0001, we use a dotted line, still on x equals 3, to show that we're including every point to the right of that line, just not anything that is exactly on that line. So to draw an inequality such as 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12, we first need to draw the line 2x plus 3y equals 12. Now you might be tempted to try and rearrange this into gradient intercept form and you certainly could do that. But it's easier to plot a line like this by finding the x and the y intercepts. The x intercept is when y equals 0, so that's when x is 6, and the y intercept is when x is 0, so that's when y is 4. Once we have our two intercepts, we can plot the line. Next, we need to establish which side of the line satisfies our inequality. Every point on this line is such that if you multiply the x-coordinate by 2 and the y-coordinate by 3, the result will be 12. 
What if we take a point this side of the line, 5, 5, for example? 2 lots of 5 is 10, 3 lots of 5 is 15, add them together, that's 25. Certainly not less than or equal to 12. So let's take a point on the other side of the line. 0, 0 is a nice easy one. 2 lots of 0 plus 3 lots of 0, that's 0, and it definitely is less than 12. So this is the side of the line that we need to shade. When graphing multiple inequalities on the same axes, I have a slightly different approach, which is to shade the side of the line that we don't want. I'll show you why as we go along. So firstly, we want x to be greater than or equal to 0, which is everywhere to the right of the y-axis. But I'm just going to shade lightly to the left of the y-axis. This is the area that we do not want. Similarly, we want y to be greater than or equal to 0, so I'm going to shade the side of the x-axis where y is less than 0. So the reason for doing this is because otherwise the region that you're trying to find can get very cluttered with shading. What I'm looking for now is a region which is not shaded. Thirdly, x is less than or equal to 8, so I start by drawing the line x equals 8, and I'm going to shade to the right of it, which is everywhere that's greater than 8. And then y less than 7, so this time I need a dotted line along y equals 7, and I'm going to shade everywhere that's greater than 7. Now I need the line 2x plus y equals 10. So when y is 0, x is 5, and when x is 0, y is 10. That gives me the two points I can use to draw my line. And I require the region where 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 10. So I'll check the point 0, 0. 2x plus y at 0, 0 is 0, which is less than 10. So I don't require this side of the line. And finally, I need the line x plus 2y equals 12. When y is 0, x is 12. And when x is 0, y is 6. And I need a dotted line because it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. I'll check 0, 0. 0 plus 0 is less than 12, not greater than 12. So this is the side of the line that I do not require. So now I can see the region that I do require because it's the section that has not been shaded and I'll just take a different colour and shade it for my final answer. And in a linear programming context, this is known as the feasible region. Let's return to the problem with the potions and plot the inequalities graphically to determine the feasible region. Firstly, we've got x and y both greater than or equal to zero. So I've shaded the parts of the graph where x and y are negative. Next, we've got 2x plus y greater than or equal to 80. So I need the line 2x plus y equals 80. And we need 2x plus y to be greater than or equal to 80. So I'll shade the other side of the line as before. Next, we want 2x plus y to be less than or equal to 160. You can see that those two lines are parallel. This time I need to be less than 160. Then we have 2x plus 3y greater than or equal to 120. We need the region above that line. And 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 180. And we need the region below that line. And finally we need 2x plus 7y greater than or equal to 140. And now we've found our feasible region, which I'll shade in a different colour. So make sure you plot these inequalities on your graph and check that all of the feasible points you found from before do lie within your feasible region. So any combination of potion X and potion Y which lies within our feasible region will meet the criteria for our new potion. Our final consideration is which is the best combination to use. And from the pharmacist's point of view, that will largely depend on cost. For example, 40 millilitres of potion X and 20 millilitres of potion Y is feasible, but is it the cheapest from the pharmacist's point of view?